are living in an artificially induced state of consciousness that resembles sleep. They have created a repressive society, and we are their unwitting accomplices. We have been lulled into a trance. From the Kingdom of Ohio, you are listening to Detox, where according to one commenter on YouTube, we've devolved into an attempt to cash in on right-wing conspiracy theories and bashing progressivism, and, well, shit, man, I could not be more flattered by that. Probably why I'm shadow banned there now, and probably why I put the advisory sticker on the bottom right of the logo here. Anyway, I am Ryan Peverly. Welcome to the D program, and that is exactly what this is, a deprogram from the political teat that we've all suckled on for far too long because we have bigger problems than right versus left, red versus blue, black versus white, vax versus anti-vax, and immature, closed-minded YouTubers versus rational, level-headed podcast hosts, or whatever other divisive equation the Matrix slumlords have delivered to you via your oh-so-progressive newsfeed algorithms. Newsflash, kiddos. Left wing, right wing, same fucking bird. And I ain't talking turkey, or maybe I am. Happy belated Thanksgiving to those of you in the States. Hope it was chock full of gratitude and attitude. I know mine was. And I'm a little riled up here if you can't tell. But I'm speaking truth because we do have bigger problems than bickering about politics on the internet. And perhaps the biggest is the geoengineered climate hoax that's ramping up in real time. We touched on that with Matt Landman in the previous episode. And this episode is a fitting sequel to that because I am digging into a practical solution to combat that agenda with my guest, Mitch the Orgone Donor. Mitch is an Orgone energy researcher living in Sedona, Arizona. Since learning about Orgone's ability to combat geoengineering and neutralize the harmful effects of EMF, he's created thousands of Orgone energy devices and gifted them to the planet. Along with other Orgone workers all over the world, Mitch has helped shut down the HARP network of geoengineering and mind control and continues to destroy the frequency fence of cell towers, smart meters, Wi-Fi routers, and other parasitic EMF sources plaguing our planet. We're going to touch on all that and more, and before we get into the chat, just a quick note on some audio gremlins. I had to switch Mitch's audio to another version of the recording about halfway through our two-hour chat, and there's a couple hiccups, but nothing that should freak you out too much. So sit back, relax, cozy up to a cloud buster, and let's do this damn detox thing. Enjoy. Mitch, hey man, welcome to what I call the D program. Thanks so much for being here. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Ryan. No problem. No problem. You have a very holistic approach to what you're doing here and why you're doing it. And I want to get to all that, obviously. I also want to know right up front here, when did you start to take an interest in uh, and I don't want to pigeonhole you here as just the Oregon guy. So let's go beyond that. When did you first get hip to what's happening on this plane right now? You know, chemtrails, geoengineering, climate change hoax, cell phone towers, frequency war, weather war, consciousness war at all. When did these things first pop up on your personal Doppler radar? Yeah. So for me, I think like a lot of folks, um, there were a couple of timestamps there around like 2008, 12, 16, and of course 20. For me, things really started getting like red flags were going off or lights going off in 2012. I started learning about currency. I started learning about the monetary system, which oddly enough, I ended up quickly learning about how the only way to make sense of of how money controlled the planet was that there was an energetic component to it. And then it, it became this whole, you know, just dabbling little by little about this energy and how it was like, okay, I keep hearing about this frequency. Everyone's talking about the frequency, the vibration and you know, before the new age was the new age that we see it as today. But there were just key components that I'm like, so there's, there's more to this realm. By 2016, I, well, actually it was about 2015. I knew there was something just horribly wrong with the sky uh, and the weather. Uh, I had done a little traveling and just noticed certain patterns based on like where I lived in Chicago uh, which I now today can look back and say, okay, I lived in an EMF hellhole, about is what I say. And uh, piecing that together over time, I realized like there was this energy component. 
as far as getting into like organite or orgon energy specifically, the Wilhelm Reich type stuff, you know, I think it was about late 2015. Basically, I I did a very general search. Basically, I was distressed about the sky. I was distressed about these lines I kept seeing that had always been there. But you know how one day you just like notice and then you really notice. And, and that's what a lot of where a lot of people are now. And so I simply put in a search, how do you stop chemtrails? Because I, you know, maybe it's that simple. I know it's kind of a dumb question. And oddly enough, <laughs> I came across a little hockey puck shaped device that I thought was incredibly stupid. And the whole the, the conversation that was going on about it, you know, there were very few people who'd been using these devices, uh, or who really knew the components of the towers and, and the frequency fence and how those two are connected. So all of a sudden it was like, I just got like thrown into this rabbit hole that was like, okay, now I know there's this energy component. I know there's the weather component. I know there's this consciousness thing everyone's talking about. And then all of a sudden it was like, holy crap, this is all connected. And it's all so meticulously connected and orchestrated. But I set out to prove this particular thing that I do. Uh, I, I set to prove it wrong and it backfired because I started busting towers, what we call the tower busting. And just one tower turned into two, turned into three and then all of a sudden it was like dozens and and knocked out so many throughout like where I lived in Chicago and, and throughout Illinois and just kept going with it and as I was learning about Wilhelm Reich along this whole path I purposefully came here to Arizona because this is where he came to discover that deserts are not natural that this earth has been terraformed for a very long time and that as of right now you know it's like i learn something new every single day so a lot of my opinions that i know will actually go into during this conversation they don't match the 2016 version of me because certain things i've evolved on where more information came to light or there's more evidence whether it's anecdotal or observational you know i have tons and tons of theories i throw out throughout my social media and my blogging and, and things like that and it's just this compare and compare and compare and basically just experimenting with this stuff and piecing this puzzle together. But every day that you flip over a new piece and you put that puzzle together, there's two new pieces now you have to flip together too. It's like the more you learn, the less you know. And so it's just never ending with that. But you know, fast forward to today, I know we'll talk specifically about some projects I've, I've been working on here in the Arizona desert. If people haven't heard by now, we just had one of the wettest years on record and our rain cycle came back. We had a really great monsoon season. We've had a second spring, you know, the forests are healing, the, the grass is green, the animals are thriving, and there's a lot to talk about. So that's where I am. That's like the most uh, simplistic way I can explain that. But to just, you know, there's there's a lot going on right now with the climate crisis too. And I, I really, I call it a climate hoax. I encourage people to use the word climate hoax because I would like that energy signature of the word to get carried with it because it is a hoax. And it's a big ass batch of bullshit that I look forward to, you know, proving wrong because, you know, the sky is not falling and the earth is healing itself. We just have these tools to speed up that process. Yeah, you use the term frequency fence in your answer there. I've heard you talk about that in some other places too on your website and some other interviews you've given. But for people who might be new to that term or that idea, break that down for them, what you mean when you say that and how it's working in our environment and then also how it's working, I guess, in our consciousness as well, or maybe against it, right? Yeah. So a lot of folks, the first thing to, that I think people will come across when they hear about the frequency fence is they're going to hear about HARP. It's basically a tower facility located near Fairbanks, Alaska. It's basically a, a array of towers that at one point in time were used to blast frequencies into the ionosphere for purposes of manipulating the weather to control the weather. That's what people have figured out by deductive reasoning in comparison to what you can find through a, a Wikipedia page and, and what they're willing to say through a Freedom of Information Act uh, disclosure. But what's happened over time, and, and people tell me all the time, like, oh, well, so we just have to go to Alaska and bust the towers and end of world domination or whatever. And it's like, no, the tower network, like, I think that facility specifically has been decommissioned. So they say, I know it's still operational through the University of Fairbanks, but it's been migrated. It's been migrated into the entire cellular network. It's been migrated into the 5G network. So the frequency fence is essentially a frequency web bubble, which, you know, a lot of people will say, well, how do you know this? Look at what has happened, especially just in the last year and a half. 
how long have we been in the COVID timeline? Almost two years now. The 5G expansion is a huge component of this. Because the human consciousness has expanded too quickly for whatever reason uh, and something wants to slow that down and so this you know you have this frequency fence this bubble of what i just call ai or anti-consciousness anti-life really it's basically manufactured through every tower through every burn off dirty electricity every emf every radio tower it's even the the bluetooth speakers and the airpods people put next to their brain they're doing everything they can to create the smart home you know first it was like the smart meters on your house those are a component the wi-fi router that's in your home that's a component and with all this stuff together you just get this huge network that you know, it's think of it like a highway where, you know, what wants to pass through it can pass through it because that web is there. And when you get into things like tower busting, where you're putting devices like the Organite that we'll talk about, where you put those things around these towers and you can change those frequencies. And when you change those frequencies, you make them coherent with life. You make them coherent with the natural world. EMF in and of itself is not necessarily a bad thing. And that's, I think that's a misconception that, you know, because the earth has its own electromagnetic fields. We have our own electromagnetic fields. There's a reason they want you to stand six feet apart from someone else because your electromagnetic field is going to react with somebody else's, helping you bond. So in and of itself, it's not bad, but these are non-native to this to this realm. They're non-native to natural life. They're incoherent with organic, basically material life, uh, like the life energy, which is you know kind of another name for orgone or chi or prana. And so you create this pathway for all of these nefarious things that are going on, and that includes the weather manipulation. Uh, you're ionizing the entire planet really within this bubble and so you know within that it's like i tell people we live in a harry potter type of a world that once you've electrified and you know ionized the entire atmosphere from from through the ground up to the atmosphere you can do a lot of different you know magical type things in that it's not really magic it's just physics but yeah so i mean these things are shutting down those things that they're using to create this bubble of like an artificial construct, basically, that's being overlaid on the natural realm. And it starts with the towers and it is connected to the lines in the sky that, you know, will plume outward and cover the sun and halt the rain production. They'll bust up rain clouds. But, you know, like I said, how the 2016 version of all my belief system doesn't align completely with what I've discovered now, because at the rate things are going, a lot of things have come to light that I know just today, we were talking before our conversation, how much the sky uh, chemtrails have intensified today. We have a full moon today, and we had a lunar eclipse this morning, I think around three o'clock in the morning. And if you look at like any of these eclipses, go back to the twenty, the big 2017 one and how much chemtrail activity was going on. There's something going on in the sky that we are being exposed to. We're seeing, we're about to see that someone, someone or something is trying to cover it up. And so, um, you know, that's only one component of this whole massive web of stuff, because again, it's like, it's this anti-consciousness life. It's, you've got the towers connected to the poison dart that's going on right now. You've got the, the chemtrails trails you've got all of these emf toys that are getting you know they're trying to get them closer and closer and closer to our heart our mind our brain essentially our soul is what they're doing anyway i know this is like a lot this is like a lot being thrown at one time but essentially it's just this entire web that will create a artificial construct over the natural realm You've even got two timelines right now, it seems. You've got people who are embracing the artificial path, and then you've got what I would just say is the rest of us who don't want that. We aren't choosing that. We are trying to create a natural realm where nature flows. And when you experiment with this technology, you can do what I just did with the help of a lot of individuals around Arizona. We have helped restore the life cycle here in Arizona. There's rivers that are flowing that didn't flow before. We've had you know, rain production everywhere throughout the state. It's become harder and harder for the, what I call the weather actors on TV, the meteorologists to, you know, talk about the doom and gloom 
they'll always try to attach rain as a negative thing. Even right now, I know it's flooding, or not flooding, but it's raining quite heavily up in the Pacific Northwest. They always have a name for something. They're going to call it something negative. I think right now they're calling it an atmospheric river. If it's not that, it's a polar vortex. If it's not that, it's a bomb cyclone. That was the last thing. It's like, no, what it is, is the earth is healing itself because people have figured out that there are frequency weapons that are meant to terraform this planet and they figured out how to shut them down. They figured out a way to fight back. And I see people doing that all the time, you know, even in the short since just early fall, you know, the last interview I did that had gotten us connected with, uh, I did with Alpha Vedic. And since then, the outreach I've had, the number of people who've contacted me to learn how to do this and to take an active role is through the damn roof. I mean, I can't keep up anymore with the amount of messages I get on a daily basis. And I'm trying my best, but the number of people, especially in the West and the Pacific Northwest, there are people busting towers everywhere. I would just like people to remember that when you see things in the news, if it's about the weather, they're always going to spin it in a way that's negative. They're always going to make it sound bad. Last year in, in Texas, they got a snowstorm that helped revitalize the soil and gave them one of the wettest years they've ever had. And of course, then came the TikTok videos where people were burning snow and saying the snow is fake. And I, I did a whole expose on that on my blog, just checked from back in February, explaining how that was a big batch of bullshit because there are a ton of people in Texas that I know, specifically some I don't know that well, but there are so many people in Texas who are busting towers. So they started getting their rain back. And the same thing happened down here in Arizona. I know it's happening in parts of New Mexico. And now it's happening in the Pacific Northwest and up in Idaho. Uh, I know you and I, when we connected, we were talking about a trip that my counterpart and I had recently taken. We went to Idaho. We went through Montana, Idaho, Utah, went to a whole bunch of places, went to Lake Mead and the Hoover Dam because these are essentially energy conductors, energy batteries that have been converted to terraform and desertify this country, this land. And we went on a you know rampage, basically burying earth pipes across the country. And here in Arizona specifically this year, you know, I took it upon myself to do this project where I was called it Earth Pipes Across Arizona. I've lost track of how many of these it's in the thousands that I have made and distributed that I have shared with countless people throughout Phoenix, Tucson, all the way down to Yuma, up to Flag, Kingman. There's nowhere in Arizona that's not untouched uh, in some way with earth pipes. And we are still going strong with that. We're actually, just before I hopped on here, planning our next outing here uh, sometime between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And just the other day, we went and hit another Nexrad tower, which we can talk about those too, because I want to encourage people that, you know, what to look for, how to do this. I know that's part of the conversation as well. So I don't want to jump too far ahead. No, that's totally cool. Yeah, we will get to that in a few minutes. You know, one of the things, though, that I like about you the most is that you're an actual observer. You just watch. You watch the skies. You watch the weather patterns. So I'm wondering if you could share with us some of the things that you've observed or some of the tricks here, because I'm specifically curious about, like, you know, what do we look for in the skies beyond the aircraft just spraying chemtrails? Because those are pretty obvious. But when we look up at the clouds, for example, how do we know if these clouds are real or if they're man-made? How do we know if the rainfall or the snow is real or if it's geoengineered or is everything just artificial now? Yeah. You know, the first thing I'm going to answer with that is uh, in regards to the water and the, the rain. Is it real or not? Because this is something I get messages all the time from people that are like, oh, they like with Texas last year. Oh, they hit us really hard. They made all this fake rain. They can't make rain. The earth can make rain. The, this realm can make rain because it's an energetic process. It's signals talking to itself, saying where it needs to rain, when, why, and how. There's no evidence even of you know the silver iodide stories about cloud seeding and all that. What they want is, and this is one of the observations I would tell people, like, be mindful of this. When I tell people, they always say, like, oh, I good point. I should, I'll start watching. The narrative is changing very, very quickly. They denied geoengineering forever and something happened. They don't have a handle on it anymore. And a lot of positive things are happening. Places are being revitalized. Places are being restored. So what are they doing now? They're telling everybody that like last year, they seeded the idea that China can create artificial snow. That actually came out the same week as the Texas snowstorm. And it came out with good reason. I talk about that in that blog article I mentioned. And it's this idea now that what they're going to do with drought, the drought that they cause, because they can halt rain, they can move it to different areas. It's an energetic field. And this is something you have to do a lot of research from different areas 
in order for it to start to make sense that it's not just a tower preventing the rain cloud. There's a basically a portal. Think about it in terms of like energy fields and what can happen in those energy fields when you're using alchemical processes, when you're manipulating elements. You get into a whole tangent uh, or you get a whole rabbit hole of like particle accelerators and and what really is going on under the soil or under the earth okay so anyway i'm getting on a tangent with that but my point is is like it's it's a big can of worms when i say they can't make it rain and i'm not just saying that to pull it out of my my behind i'm saying that like there's there's a reason as far as like other things to be observant of i just recently discovered this website for looking at the ley lines you can find that a lot of these trails they follow it's why why they look like pentagrams why they look like the patterns that they do and things are in the angles that they are they line up perfectly with the ley lines the lines going from one point to another and then you look at those points what's on those points if you're here in arizona like I can go out into the desert and I find some very nefarious looking militarized crap. And I know like, just first of all, look at like where towers are. You can find the connection between water and water being the best energy conductor there is on this planet. Why do they put towers on water towers? Why is the Hoover Dam completely saturated? I mean, it is so heavily saturated with towers. Lake Mead, Lake Powell, Lake Tahoe, all these places over here that we've been going around and, and applying our solution. And then all of a sudden, these lakes start filling up. It's like they're using frequencies to basically prevent the natural rising of water because all the water comes from the ground. It's like people think that the their drinking water comes from rain and it doesn't. It comes from in the ground. You pay attention to tower placement, pay attention to the patterns the lines have. You'll see ripples in the sky. This is one, if you live in a mountainous area, do some digging into what towers may be at the peaks of these mountain tops. And if you look at the patterns in the sky, when you see like a white shield, what looks like almost a force field, you will see ripples very often that, you know, kind of look like cornrows. And if you follow those lines, those patterns, you can see indentations that will like lead directly back to a point from one mountaintop to another. If you go up into the mountains where those points are going, you'll see, you'll find the towers. And the reason is because those towers are all talking to each other. And in the case of Arizona, you know, one of the hardest targets, I'll call it, one of the hardest targets for us is the towers that they place in these very secluded mountainous areas where you can go to them. It's not a big it's not a big deal. You don't have to do anything bad to get there. It's a hike or it's a campsite. They're off the beaten path. You might have to drive for a couple hours, then get out of the car and walk for a couple of hours. You might have to fight a bear. I don't know. But you have to go search for them. But you will find them when you look for indentations in the sky. They'll lead you right back to where those towers are because they're all talking to each other. And here in Arizona specifically, I've got two that because we're on one side, like we've got Flagstaff up the hill. We've got Mingus Mountain over here to the southwest of us. And we've strategically dealt with towers in those areas. Before then, I would see ripples all the time that would connect. You could see them just connecting and feeding what I call the white canopy that would just sort of hover over the Verde Valley area and just linger so that it could it would just build this like oil slick looking thing over the sun and then it blocked the sun all day. And so that's just, you know, one method is look at the patterns in the sky, where they lead to. You can go find those towers. You'll often find them on uh, energy points. You'll find them on ley lines. You'll find them around monuments. You'll find them a lot of the times, like around here, they're, they're in areas that are named devil this or devil that. There's a whole occult component to this. It's like a never ending rabbit hole when it comes to energy and uh, the occult or what i just call the demonic stuff the anti-life stuff it's all connected so like like people can go bust a tower like i hear from people they're just like mitch what do i do i just want to like deal with my home put some stuff around my home maybe my neighborhood maybe my kid's school that's fine but for those who really want to make sense of this it's a lot more convoluted than that. There's so many components and there's more and more coming out every single day at such a fast rate about like, it's it's no longer just learning about Wilhelm Reich and then learning about this hockey puck thing, which uh, interesting enough, they're not really connected or Reich wouldn't know what a piece of organite was. But, you know, it's looking at the towers and researching things like the pyramids and frequencies and Royal Rife and Alana Freeland and like all these people that are, you know, dealing with the harp, the chemtrails, the towers, the water, Masaru Emoto, like all of this stuff is connected. And so at the root of it all is our consciousness, our consciousness expansion, our 
you know, essentially, I'm sure you've heard this. I'm sure most people listening to this have heard this, that we are basically in a battle for our soul and it's a spiritual war. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I'm glad you mentioned water too, because we just had an episode with a, a water researcher and, you know, she focuses in on the intelligence and the consciousness of water. Uh, she does a lot of the same experiments that Emoto did, you know, where she's testing music and word and frequency on water and then freezing it to see what patterns sort of emerge from that. And I know you've done the same thing with your orgone tech, which we can talk about in a minute too, but I just want to stay on that water, that topic of water. I never heard anybody make the connection before that these towers were built over or near water sources, but it makes sense. I'm curious though, from your perspective, like, is this some sort of interruption between the cycle of maybe the water above, if you believe in like a firmament and the water below that sort of core water, that primary water that you're talking about that comes out of the ground? Is there some sort of connection between those two points of this grid almost, if you think about it that way, and then this frequency fence in the middle of it, that's just sort of cutting off this cycle? You know, to be honest, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I have a lot of hypotheses and I have theories based on something I'll try. In my personal opinion, you know, I, I just uh, I was reading a book called Who Built the Moon and learning about like that component of this whole thing with the frequencies. And, you know, I have a page on my website specifically about water. I think it's titled The Water Song under the Orgone Energy tab on my website that I would tell people go go look at that. But I don't have all the answers on it. Um, because in my view, some people have asked me like, well, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? I don't know yet. And I've only ever, I've just, I've always been lied to. And I'm still like a lot of people. It's like, I don't even know the shape of the planet that I live on, to be honest, you know, and I want to think I have an opinion on that. I'm not going to be, be arrogant enough to say, I absolutely know because I don't. And actually, you know, even just the other day, and I can talk about this a little later, but I'll just say now that I saw a film the other day that. It was supposed to be cheeky fun comedy uh, called Free Guy that freaked me out the whole time. It was one of the most uncomfortable movies I've ever watched. And it made me reevaluate a whole lot of things that lined up with a video I saw recently from, I might say, I might butcher this name. You probably know, is it FPV Angel? Does that sound yeah. right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. It tied to what I was doing because it talks about the idea of technology that can be used to cloak this realm and make it appear to be something that it's not. And I see every day, you know, I have this theory. I would like to see every human being on earth just plant earth pipes everywhere that they live, where they go, every community, every town, especially the heavy populated areas. I would love the entire electrical grid to be so heavily neutralized with organite that whatever it is that they're cloaking or, but I want to know what is it you're covering up? What technology, what is this technology doing as far as keeping our blinders on? And I don't even know sometimes if I'm ready for that answer. But anyway, the point being is I don't, I don't know the answer because I'm still learning. And like I said, the more you learn, it's like the less, you know, because you find the end of one rabbit hole just to find the doorway to another one. Uh, no, I think it is the best because it beats trying to pretend like you do know what's going on when it's kind of what you were talking about. Like, I don't know what shape the planet is. I don't either. I think flat earth is compelling. Like, I think there's some interesting things about that. But at the end of the day, I'm still kind of relying on somebody else's research and not my own, you know, sort of experiential observations to make that determination. Like, but, you know, I mean, I guess to the point of frequency, right? Like, I think that, that there is something more to, there's an energetic component to this that gets sort of dismissed when you talk about what shape is the earth or what kind of environment are we living in I and mean, we know it runs on frequency we know it runs on vibration you know so that feels like that there's some sort of creation or connective source there that does inform the environment that we live in right like maybe the shape of the earth is sort of irrelevant like what we're really trying to talk about is what does this actually run on you know like what is the power source of this experience here yeah, I mean, I learned just from our from our recent trip through the West and our stopover in Las Vegas, just driving through Nevada, it's a giant battery. And a lot of the desert area, like where we, where we drove through with Arizona, it's so obvious that this was at one time the bottom of the ocean. And so it's like, okay, where did that water go? Well, you know, you're talking about if there are waters above. I have this thing I've only recently started talking about that I call ether damming. Uh, it's essentially, it's the idea of damming up a barrier of energy against the jet stream, against the natural orgone flow through this, through this realm and what you can do when when you ether dam and I have had experiences where I've had rain falling on me and there was not a cloud in the sky and it 
really, it just opened up another can of worms. And I've had, I've now been hearing from other people who have been talking about that and they're, you know, I don't have the answer to it. It's just, you know, again, you compare it with all these different things as above, so below. I mean, all you can do is just play around with this stuff. I mean, play, play around. And even, and actually, because you mentioned something about like proving things and and what you prove to yourself and whatever. Wilhelm Reich had a quote, I'm going to butcher it, but he talked about how, like he said, what is proof? The only thing you can do is apply like the, the good old fashioned method of seeking out information yourself. And the only person you're ever going to prove anything to is you. You're the only one who's going to prove anything to, to you. And I tell people too, like, cause people want to pick fights about this. I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of beyond that where I, I don't even acknowledge the message, let alone a response, but I'm not here to change anyone's belief system. I am just simply saying what I know from my experience doing what I've done throughout this journey. And so what I know is that I will always tell people, I'm never going to prove to you that putting organite around cell phone towers fixes the weather, that it reestablishes the natural flow of energy. I'm not going to be able to prove any of that to you. The only person who is, is you. And so that's why I tell people, you'll never understand this until you get active with it. You know, and I, and I tell people too, especially because I know a lot of people, um, you know, they, especially since that last interview I had done, a lot of people were new to it. I had a number of people, uh, and I blame the New Age community for this, and I live in their Mecca here in Sedona, but um, they have tied Organite to the New Age to be more of the juju, you know, improving your juju space, when in reality, this is a technology that can be used for such a greater purpose than just getting a pyramid to stick in your bedroom. This is about a frequency war, and that's dark and whatever, and I'm like, I don't give a crap. Let's call a spade a spade and fix this problem. Otherwise, get out of the way. But people associate Organite with a lot of very foo-foo New Age stuff, and then they write it off. And so it's all by design, too. That's one thing I've learned. There's so much pushback from Organite that isn't even about... Like, people aren't just saying, like, like, oh, Organite, that sounds like crap. You're a conspiracy theorist. No, it's much more cunning than that. It's more like vilifying the use of like polyester resins because they think oil is evil and they don't realize what oil really is and how infinite it is. But there are these tactics to, to demonize this in some way. And so uh, anyway, because people associate it with that demographic, then they don't get into this other side that is like, oh, this is a tool. This is more like the crazy Nikola Tesla shit where it's like everything in our universe is electrified or magnetic. And this is a component to that. You know, I was just learning last night. This is just a side tangent, but last night I was watching this woman. I follow fairly regularly. Her name's Emily Moyer. If people are interested, Emily C. Moyer.com. I'm sure maybe you heard her and Michael Wan do a show called the glass bead game, which I love watching. And they were talking about the Amish and what if the Amish knew, you know, I know that they, they stay away from technology for certain reasons. And that could be for, I don't know enough about the Amish to declare the, the exact reason. There's some religious belief system there. And what's interesting to me is in, when you get into things like cell towers and the idea of what these fields create and whether they're opening rifts or portals or anything like that, perhaps some people are aware that very demonic, dark energies can be transported through certain types of energy fields when you tune them the right way. And so it's just like, I don't know, it's just, again, it's like every day I learn something new or I, I hear something else that makes me go, hmm, interesting. Let me compare this to the last six years of all of this and like figure out how it, it fits into this puzzle piece. Yeah. And you, know, you mentioned Reich uh, in that answer and I I know that your purpose here isn't centered on being a scholar of the work of him, but you did learn the basics from him and have since expanded on his idea of orgone energy. And I think the point to drive home here is that, yes, we do know of this energy because of Reich and his research, but knowing of it and working with it and applying it to a purpose, as you have, are two very different things. And I think before we go any further, that we should just maybe briefly tell people about Reich and his work and what it is exactly so that we can set the stage for the rest of the chat here. 
For anyone that would be new to that idea or new to hearing his name, most people probably heard it at this point. But, you know, his whole thing, he's the father of orgonomy. I mean, and people know that the basics of like the word orgone comes from the word orgasm because it's this idea that the sexual energy is really the root of this and not meaning sex. It means that the energy that is basically the energy of life, so the energy of like procreation, the energy of keeping everything in balance. I would equate it to God consciousness. That is this energy he was able to measure. And you'll also hear everyone talks about like his connection with Sigmund Freud. He was a protege or a student. He doesn't talk too much about Freud. And when you get into Freud and Edward Bernays and that whole can of worms, it to me, I'm like, oh, he clearly distanced himself from that because I don't, I think Freud was a disgusting person and what he did to kids was horrific. Anyway, Wilhelm Reich, he was an Austrian scientist. He came to the United States. He started messing around or started working with these these things he called the organ accumulator, where he layered certain materials when he figured out certain things could attract or repel different energies. He built these contraptions, which most people will hear about, the organ accumulator. It looks kind of like a small, hollow refrigerator box, and a person can sit inside of that box where the energy field, the positive energy field, is harnessed to the center of that box so you can apply it to the body. His experiments, he spent a lot of time working with cancer patients and on, uh, with women who, were, who had fertility issues. You know, we have to be careful about using words like cure, but I would recommend people read his, read his books. What he did is he applied this energy to put the body back in, in balance, and it's like what processes happen when you do that. And what's interesting, then you fast forward to today and compare it with the tower network and the frequency fence and what these things are doing to inhibit all those natural processes. And then you get into the can of worms of the poison dart and the graphene oxides and the frequency change in, changing channels of the frequencies of our body. So anyway, going back to, to Reich, you know, he had worked with the organ accumulator. I would recommend that people, if you're going to get into organite and you, again, you want to understand the whole puzzle, which you never will, but more of the puzzle, the two main books I would recommend are Ether, God and Devil and Contact with Space. And then I also tell people they should, uh, they should go and, and read about the Oriner experiment where he was researching the effects of harnessing orgone energy on radioactive material. And there's a whole other can of worms with that that I've learned recently that's like through, through learning this and even just dabbling with hockey pucks and cell towers, I'm at the point where I'm like, I know, I, I know there will never be a nuclear bomb go off in this realm ever. And that's probably a very serious statement to make but like there's a reason for that and it's because nuclear energy is not this boogeyman that they say that it is they try to make us think that it is they want us to think someone has a their hand on a red button somewhere in a briefcase that they can push at any time and that's not that's not true but anyway so in, in regards to Wilhelm Reich's work you're going to read about like the imbalance of the body you know, he wrote a book on the connections between when you mess up the sexual energy and the psychological effects that that has on creating basically a communist. I mean, it, it was um, Psychology of Fascism, I think is what it was called. I just dabbled in that book and I'm like, oh my God, this makes the, this makes the women's movement of recent years, made feminism, modern day feminism, make sense to me. And how like why kids are you know, hypersexualized with Disney movies. And then they go on to middle school where the guys are told that, you know, you gotta be a, you gotta be a manly man. You sleep around, but the girls you do it, you're a whore. And it's like, there's a reason why we throw off everything we can with the sexual energy of people because of the life process that is connected to it. And so to get a better understanding of those processes, that's where Wilhelm Reich comes in. Along with the Cloud Buster, people will probably come across the Cloud Buster, which means you'll also come across the Chem Buster. The Chem Buster means it is busting chemtrails. The chemtrails are, of course, connected to the frequency fence. The frequency fence is connected to the life energy. So this is how the whole circle comes together. But in regards to Reich's Cloud Buster, he came to Arizona. He was south of here. He was down near Tucson and was using his Cloud Buster to basically agitate the ether, the, the atmosphere, and to basically promote rain production. He sped up the process of growing vegetation and increased rain production for farming. And so in contact with space specifically, like he talks about the terraforming of the planet 
And, you know, I look around the desert everywhere I go when we're busting towers and I see like what they're doing again, why they're on the water sources to try and dry up the water sources, because I know Arizona at one time was a complete oasis. And I'm learning now with the very successful monsoon season we just had, you know, there were a lot of places the water did not have to go because it came back very rapidly. And it makes me wonder it's that's i can't put a stamp and say this is exactly what it is but it makes me wonder if a lot of these places that have been desertified were actually huge oases as i look around at the ancient tree stumps or what looks like tree stumps in the ground uh, or possibly terraformed buildings castles i don't know there, I, there's all kinds of stories about seismic activity and frequency weapons being used to basically melt things and burn things and, and destroy everything but as i look around at this it's like maybe it was supposed to rain like this all the time forever and there was always vegetation to accommodate that there were rivers that were prepared to to handle this flow that have been transmute or that have been basically bastardized you know i was just talking to somebody yesterday about because i started doing this in chicago this person was also from chicago and we were talking about how they had changed the directional flow of the Chicago River in like I think the early 1800s and of course they say it was for you know livestock purposes to, to prevent certain pollution of Lake Michigan because it went out into Lake Michigan and it's like no it's in the name Chicago that city is very energetic it was burned to the ground once through a reset and if you ever read a book called the devil in the white city Eric Larson is a history rewriter by the way but uh, the devil in the white city talks about the world's fair which was really an excuse to destroy a former civilization with people who built some some very elaborate buildings that were energy generators and they just used it as an excuse to destroy and wipe out a civilization. They did a reset, similar to what they're doing right now. Anyway, again, it's I'm all over the place. I wear, I'm going to reel it back just a second. But the point being is that all of this is connected. When you, when you start to make sense of energy, and even with geoengineering, I could never figure out why, why chemtrails, why is this in the sky? And by learning about energy, the rice stuff by learning about life energy by learning about the frequency and the water and all this this consciousness stuff it's all connected I, i've made more sense learning about geoengineering by learning about orgone than i would have reading all of the patents that the government wants to put out there you know for us to be basically distracted by yeah, and just to stay on that geoengineering or that chemtrail topic for just a moment, I meant to ask this earlier, but since it kind of came back up, you don't actually subscribe to the, I guess we would call it the traditional chemtrail definition anymore of this aluminum, barium, strontium story. You're beyond that with that, right? Yeah, and that's a hard one for a lot of people to digest now. And I've seen a couple other organite folk who, or, or orgone folk, who I think kind of came to this same realization. The more we were busting towers, the reactions we've seen. If you want to really, like I tell people, it, uh, okay, so I had one person who said, Mitch, I busted a tower in my neighborhood. Why are there still chemtrails in the sky? So that's not enough obviously there are 11 bajillion towers in the world so like you gotta you gotta do a lot like this is not easy work no one said it was easy but some people seem to think that it is if you want to see some really intense reactions and really have your mind blown as far as this aluminum barium and strontium stuff you need to go out and bust a substantial number of towers in your area and then you need to start installing those things we call the chem busters which are what are there the thing that is based on Wilhelm Reich's cloud buster? But the chem busters, once you do that and you watch what happens with the reactions in the sky, it's like this is not aluminum particulate that is just falling to the ground. Like, where is this stuff going? I know that there's an alchemical process. And, you know, if you can convert mercury into gold, I mean, we've all heard about that, I think, at one point. And everyone's heard about Aleister Crowley and the witchcraft and, and the stuff bleeding into Hollywood and all that. It's like, there are energetic things in this realm where people can manipulate things. They can manipulate the ether. We know frequency and vibration turn into physical matter. And so at some point, it's like what is in the sky may turn into a physical thing, but it's not airplanes just spraying out aluminum. And what I think, what I'm seeing, and I started seeing this really intensify with last year's uh, snowstorm in Texas, was that as the cat was out of the bag, 
basically. People were busting towers now all over the place. And people knew, even those who didn't believe in chemtrails before, now knew something ain't right. They want to keep control of the narrative. Well, the way to do that is to let you know that we are obviously, the government, we are now changing the atmosphere for your benefit because of climate change and all that hoax. And so it's like we want to keep control of that. So what do we do? We release all kinds of reports and we tell you about what we've been spraying here and doing here and experimenting on since the beginning of time. And so what does it do? It establishes the government as the ultimate authority figure of this, which it most absolutely is not. And that is why, again, like cross this stuff that you're doing with Busting Towers with Wilhelm Reich and what he saw in the sky. I know that he saw similar things to what I see. I don't think they had a term for it. They weren't going to call it chemtrails at the time, but he saw different types of craft. Those craft do very impossible things on a regular basis. When you start playing with a chem buster, you'll see all you'll you'll have weird encounters. You'll have what we call the black helicopters, which is just Mr. Smith from the Matrix coming out to see what you're doing to screw up the Matrix. And so it's like all these anomalies that are going on. It's like there's a physical component to this, but there's an etheric one that they don't want people to get to. They want people to think that the ultimate enemy of their entire existence is their government, their overlord, their physical overlord. And it's just not the case. The more you dive into this stuff, it's like, this is all about the soul. This is all about consciousness. When people say it's a spiritual battle, that's why it's, it's not just like, you know, physical demons running amok. It's a frequency of some kind that is inhibiting or trying to inhibit, uh, everything natural in this realm. I want to show you a picture here, if that's all right. These are the Don Croft chem buster. These are, uh, these were created by Don Croft. Uh, I mean, they were made by me, but uh, this is the standard copper pipe. It's It's got a bucket at the bottom that is filled with an organite mixture, the resins and the metal, and the quartz crystals in each of the pipes. And, you know, when you start playing around with these things, they have a very long range that when you work in tandem with busting towers, you will see... A lot of what, like you can see on my website here, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing this. You can see like on my website, I have tons of videos. If you just go to my homepage and scroll down, you'll see chemtrails that are ripped apart. They become a, uh, almost they look like a DNA helix instead of pluming out and covering the sky. And it's like, well, why is that happening? It's happening because there's no frequency web here or not a coherent one for them to make that crap work in the first place. So in regards to like seeing that stuff, it's like, that's not aluminum, barium, and strontium. They want you to think that. And then, of course, people will say, well, I've, they've been testing soil, and it's been increasing and all that. And it's like, yeah, well, there's also been industrialization of this planet for a very long time. Where's the soil? Where was it tested from? You know, it's like, what, is there a water source? Could it have been carried there by water? Could it have been some asshole who just went and dumped it there at one point in time? I don't know. But I know that, like, there was supposed to be a movie about after they made that movie, what in the world are they spraying? Here's actually, here's, I'm going to take a step back. You said, you asked me a little bit ago about observations people can be on the lookout for. Here's a, the biggest one of all of this. And that is look at the way that these co topics are being presented and what's the end result that comes from the way they're presented. What I mean by that is in the case of geoengineering, is it a doom and gloom? Is there any takeaway? Is there anything anyone can do about it? Nine times out of eight, it's a no. And it's because like, if you look at the people who are pushing the aluminum, barium and strontium stuff, it's like, what's the solution? Well, there isn't one. It's all fear porn. And there are people, I'm not going to, I'm not going to name names because I, you know, and I'll be very clear. My opinions are mine. And Ryan, I know you're, I want people to know you have no connection to my personal opinions that anything I would say that offends them, they can come yell at me. But there are people I bitch about on my website who are doom and gloom. There's one I call doomsday Dane and people can figure that one out. But there are people who instill fear about this. And when you get into the energetic stuff, it's connected to consciousness. Well, all you're doing is feeding the beast. You're just, you're feeding that same web that keeps the fear porn going. I guarantee you the stuff that's going on in the sky, that's not just connected to the tower. It's connected to you. It's connected to your mood. It's connected to everything about your soul. It's the reason they're trying to inject people with certain things right now and then change the channel of what they are emitting. 
And so, uh, you know, these are just little pieces to, to go back to the, is it aluminum and at all? It, you know, no, it's not. The government may send a plane over and they may spray something and they do experiments that they have disclosed, but you're never going to get an answer about what's really going on in, in the sky. And it's in those movies, like what in the world are they spraying or the follow up to it? Why in the world are they spraying? They're the exact same movie. There's not one solution offered in it. It's like they literally just copy pasted the same movie of fear porn from start to finish. And it's like, well, what am I supposed to do with this? Or you get these whistleblowers that come out, these meteorologists that come out, which meteorologists are actors. I don't give a shit what anyone says about that. I know they're actors and they get their scripts from Weather Central. Their personalities on TV. They plaster the television and they say, we are your weather authority. If you watch that, you've consented to it. They have things like Nexrad towers. They call Doppler radar or that we call them weather balls or weather stations. The proper term is Nexrad for next generation radar technology, but they are weather stations. They do manipulate the weather and they're very, I mean, as far as like towers go, I would tell people like, you should look up where those places are in, in your state and you should do something about it. I think you would see huge changes in the weather for the better almost overnight. So yeah, and I just want to say too, like we may have been to one of these in the last few days on a camping trip. We may have put a lot of stuff around it. We may have buried a hundred earth pipes. I just tell people like you can, you can find these things. They're, they're in your area. You just have to look for them. And in the case of these, like, these are, these are bad. These are really, really bad because of the, the energy that comes off of these things for that frequency fence is just, it's like, these are the death star basically. But anyway, going back to just the whole, the connections with what's physical and what's not, what to be on the lookout for, look out for, for who is saying what, and from what angle, when a solution is applied, that's where you'll notice the people get shut up. And it's only recently, I've done this for six years, and it was only in the last few months, I think since, uh, well, we're in November, so it's since May, that I had uh, an interview that kind of opened some doors, and then it just led into a few, you know, so now here talking with you today, it's like I've had a, I've had a small handful, but it's, you know, I've been talking to a brick wall for a very long time. Why? Because they're not going to give the microphone to anybody who's figured out that it's not what's in the sky, it's the tower that's on the ground. Yeah, and... I want to get into, uh, in the second hour here, I want to get into some of the nuts and bolts too, you know? So we kind of talked about, you know, your beliefs and your approach to this stuff, how you're seeing what's happening in the environment and, you know, with the frequency and the consciousness war, but let's talk about the solution that you have come up with, not just you, you know, like there are many others as well, but, you know, building off of righteous work, you mentioned cloud busting, you've mentioned chem busting, tower busting. Well, I guess, first of all, there's no difference in those terms, cloud chem or tower busting, but do tell people a little bit about what you mean by busting something yeah well the reason they're like the tower buster is called a tower buster is because it busts that frequency i think it's you know i don't know the terminal i don't know why the terminology was that way the cloud buster specifically reich's cloud buster busted clouds or at least in that theory busted clouds that would then make them poor and so from there, I think it just, you know, for whatever reason, the early pioneers of the Organite movement, they gave them these terms. So, you know, and, and it's interesting to me, too, when I talked about how I've had rain fall on me when there's no cloud above has made me even have to reevaluate some of those processes. I'm not saying I know the answer to whatever. I'm just telling people like, I, I just don't know. But uh you know, if you read Trevor James Constable's work, where I learned about ether damming, how you can manipulate the elements to basically conjure rain clouds or to burst rain clouds, it made me have to reevaluate how clouds are formed in the first place. That is, it is simplistic as saying oxygen and hydrogen form the bond, whatever. I mean, we know the ionization is breaking those bonds, but I know there's a bigger component to it than that. And I know there is also more to the rain cycle than simply evaporation, condensation, and then the, the process of rain. So as far as the names themselves, I'm not 100% certain. I think the names, they apply pretty well. Like, I mean, the Tower Buster, if it is bust, it's busting up whatever is there re to restructure it. You know, sometimes we just call them hockey pucks. Uh, some people who are paranoid, I think, call them hockey pucks. But um, as far as the earth pipes, those are, 
I don't know when those were invented, but one of the, I had so much information thrown at me when I started doing this. I just sat at a computer for eight hours a day, just taking in everything I could. And in the process of learning about earth pipes, someone had equated them to an acupuncture needle for the earth. I was reading about people who were burying them in places like Yosemite. There were people burying them in places with high seismic activity that then there was no more seismic activity. And so I kind of, you know, cross-referencing that, it's like, it's an earth pipe. I don't know. It's just, it's doing something to the earth. It works best when it is buried in the ground because you're tapping into the same energy grid that all of those towers and everything is tapped into. But yeah, I, I was learning about, you know, people were burying those things around airports because airports, you know, and this is a big concept for a lot of people, but like there's a lot more porting at an airport than just the airplane that you're departing from. They're energy generators of some kind. They're on top of some very nefarious stuff. Just look at the Denver one. That's just one. So people bury these things around there because there are what they call either underground bases. They call them the dumb, steep underground military bases. Whether there's a military component or not, the frequency of the military, sorry, not sorry, it's not positive. Nothing militaristic is positive. It's a frequency of death and, and tyranny. And so the energy signatures that you know people are burying these things around there to change those energy signatures of those points. So... Um, Anyway, in regards to the names, yeah, I don't have the exact on why why they're all named, but the first one was the Cloud Buster. My guess is that's why they just kept going with that. So as someone who's personally curious and I guess not even curious anymore, I want to make my own Organite or Orgone Energy devices. Obviously, I, I need to learn how to do that. So since you're here, I just want to pick your brain. And for the benefit of the audience, too, if they're also curious about this, take me through what I need to start with and how to make what it is you're making, like whether it's the tower busters that are the hockey pucks or the cloud busters that you were showing earlier. OK, so, f well, first and foremost, I will always tell people first, go to my website, too, just because if you go under the Oregon Energy tab at the top, there is a drop down that says downloads, tutorials and instructions. What I've learned from hearing from from so many different people over the years is that we are all very programmed to not trust ourselves and to doubt ourselves or to also doubt that like, could I really have an effect this drastic on something? You know, am I this big of a person? And it's like, yes, you are. It took me six months of busting towers before I stopped doubting myself. Where I'm like, oh yeah, this totally is me. This is us, you know, talking to my, my counterpart. And so, and I know everybody who does it it's that same thing because once people start busting towers, I hear from them. They're like, this happened, Mitch. Was this me? And I'm like, well, here, let's go through this, whatever. And it's like, yes, nine times out of ten, it's you. And really, it's ten times out of ten. But um, it's it's that doubt. So the first thing I say is you got to get the mindset. You also need the mindset that you, you know, this is important. It is an energetic battle. It is a psychological battle. And that is not meant to scare people away. Like I've had people say like, oh yeah, I want to do this with like kiddos. Or can you come? I had somebody ask me if I would come talk to like a, a grade school. I'm like, no, absolutely not. I would talk to their parents gladly and their parents can talk to them. But no, it's because you can't, you can't give it the full appreciation. You can't give it the full attention that it deserves and and the respect it deserves and i'm not trying to sound elitist i'm just saying like think about what it is you're doing and why so get into that mindset you know to take it seriously but then also take the mindset that like you're about to do something fun that is incredibly beneficial that you're taking care of nature and so nature will take care of you so uh for anyone who's going to ask the question it's inevitable they always ask are you worried about whatever the answer is no, and I would tell you not to be either, and there are tools we'll talk about after I explain how to make this stuff. Uh, there are other tools you can make and or buy that are uh, additional tools to your arsenal of tricks to help give you added protection and things like that. So in, the, in regards to the Tower Busters, like I think a person should always have both Tower Busters and Earth Pipes. The Tower Buster, the main component of Organite, the, or the standard components of, of, I'll call it an orgon device. I don't even like to use the word organite and people can read on my website why the government lets somebody trademark that term, even though they shouldn't have. And then the, yeah, just, it's a can of worms, go read it. But it's, as far as making these things, you're going to have some component of a catalyzing resin because it is oil based and oil is a component to this because of the en energy signature it has and that it attracts. 
and then you're going to have some form of a metal component in the form of very small, small material. So we say metal shavings or metal powder. And in the way that you look at an accumulator box where it was layered with these organic and inorganic materials in the walls that harnessed it to the inside, the organite or the organ device has those same, it's, a, it's essentially a bunch of layers. I mean, if you look at, like, think of how many layers are there between every fleck of metal and every whatever molecule of the resin. So you're going to get this like same push, pull, push, pull action. We put the crystals in there because we found that, you know, and most people watching this probably know crystals have a piezoelectric effect. When you apply any kind of pressure to them, they start spitting out scalar waves, orgone waves. The resin will apply a small amount of pressure. I don't know the exact reason on why organite works. Even to this day, I used to think I knew, and then I'm like, nope, that's too arrogant. I don't fully know because I can't physically see it. I'm not one of these people like Carol Croft, who I, she, I'm pretty sure in my journey she's mentioned like the energy she sees off of this. And I think there are people intuitive enough or like certain psychics or whoever. I don't, I don't use that term loosely, but it's there are people who I think can see something on an even deeper level where I can sense it, but uh, they can physically see it in the physical form. So you put these components together, your metal, your resin, your crystals, which have silicon dioxide. So, you know, quartz is silicon dioxide. And to people that would say, well, why, why crystals? And I would say, I don't know the exact answer, but I would try to dissect the reasoning why silicon dioxide is in every single mind control device, every tech device that we have, and why the tech capital of the world is Silicon Valley. And so there is a component there about these, what I would just call them as like earthly microchips that do a lot of magical things. I mean, there's a lot that we don't even, I mean, we do know a lot about these, but you can, you can broadcast signals, you can transmit and receive signals. I mean, we've all, well, at least I have, I think in the Boy Scouts had to make a, a crystal radio, you know, and that's like the most simplistic thing you can do. But, you know, it's like, there's, there's a thing with frequencies in these and they know it and we know it and we're using them for different purposes. So to make a basic piece, you're going to have some form of your metal your resin and your quartz. From there, you're going to hear a whole, you're going to hear an endless amount of chatter on what else you can add. It's purely up to the individual. So like, I would say like, you know, I get a lot of people who, who message me and they'll show me organite that's made improperly. Uh, there's not enough metal or it's just like, there's this really ugly, ugly pyramid that people always send me. And then they got had because they bought, it's just acrylic resin with a quartz point inside and some like metal glitter that's been scattered around. It's not even metal glitter, it's polyester. But um, I'm like, no, that's not organite. That's what we call orgonaut because, you know, you have to have enough metal in the device or it's not going to have an effect on the electromagnetic field. And when I say enough, I mean approximately 50-50. There's this general idea in the orgone community that it's like we were set on 50%, 50% of resin to metal. That can vary a little bit if you had a piece that was like, I'm just going to use this cup here, measuring cup I had. But if you like were to fill this whole thing up and make it like a gigantic block tower buster, if you filled it halfway or you filled it all the way with resin and you only filled it like halfway with the metal, well, then obviously you've got enough mass there that's bigger than a tower buster, even though it's not like half and half of the actual resin amount. But what I'm saying is like to have a effect on a tower, you want something that's about four ounces. That's how I think the hockey puck, which is made in a muffin pan upside down. That's kind of how this came to be. And so uh, as long as you have that with approximately half and half, then you should be fine. You can use things like metal powders that will speed up the process. I think you get better organite with metal powder because if you think of it in terms of the space between each piece of metal and the resin, that's, you know, thousands more. I mean, this is black. This is iron oxide powder. And there's, you know, just think of how many little particles of, uh, of powder is in there with resin in between them. So it's like, you know, just think of it in terms of like the surface area available of the metal that you put inside. It's why you also want to use shavings that are about the size of pencil sharpener shavings or smaller. You don't want to use anything too big or it's just 
you're going to just end up with a block of metal. But in the case of making a tower buster, yeah, you just you want to mix together in some capacity. You, you get these elements mixed together and in whatever mold it is you want to use, whether that's a muffin pan or, you know, I mean, there's plenty of other options. People buy little rubber pyra- or silicone pyramids. They might buy, you know, a lot of bakeware, really. I mean, it's anything anything that kind of falls in line with like a cupcake shape. So uh, in regards to making earth pipes, very similar. You can do them in copper, and we've also figured out we can do them in aluminum, and they work just as well, which is great because for how many of these I put across Arizona, I'd be financially ruined if I made them all with copper. But um, – you are essentially mixing together the same elements you're you know whether you're using a cup uh, i have videos by the way so anything i'm saying like people don't have to like write this down right now i have an earth pipe video on my website that i think is pretty top notch it shows how to mix these things together in the most effective or most efficient and least messy way and you are you know pouring this stuff into whatever your pipe is and then you're putting in crystal points which i don't have any I have ones that would be too big for it, but essentially you're putting crystal points in it. There's three in here and they point this way because the pipe gets buried this way and then everything's facing downward into the ground. You can do different things to embellish. We wrap quartz crystals a certain way with wires. We add things like shungite. We add magnets. You can do all kinds of things. And if people want tips or pointers on that stuff, like I'm happy to, you know, I can email me and let me know. Keep messages brief. It's super easy to respond to a you know, brief message and not a novel. But um, anyway, yeah, you're just, you're mixing together these components in some way and then you need your mold for it. And so uh, you get very creative very quickly when you're doing it too. And I have an example here. I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, If you live in a concrete jungle, sometimes you can't bury an earth pipe in a concrete jungle. In Chicago, it was kind of difficult some places, but what wasn't difficult was finding fence posts that are already in the ground and uh hollow and so you can do i learned this i forget i forget which person i can't i don't know who to give credit to for this but you can use things like uh these either toilet paper or paper towel rolls and you can make an earth pipe the same way mix together your materials pour them in there put your quartz point in there and then you would just drop these well you peel it off when it's after it's hardened and just drop these down into fence posts and you'll convert fence posts into earth pipes in the middle of a concrete jungle. So, you know, there's things you can do to be more creative. We use, you know, in, a, in the case of what we did this last week on a camping trip, you know, we had the pucks, we had the pipes, we also made these pyramids. Some people have probably heard of the holy, I don't like the term, but it's the holy hand grenade. It's a Monty Python reference. I'll call them HHGs. So it's like a tower buster on steroids. There's different things you can do to get, you know, the, the point is make your Oregon device for whatever, whatever shape, you know, try to keep it simple. And you want to figure out a way, how do I deploy this in a way around that device in question, whatever it is you're trying to gift? How do you do that in a way that is uh, you get the longevity of it being undisturbed for the longest amount of time possible? People want a specific. They want me to give them specifics. Um, I can't give specifics. I, I really won't give specifics for certain obvious reasons. But I will just tell you that once you start, once you start identifying the towers, once you start figuring out where you want to go, it's going to come to you. It, intuitively, when you're messing around with this kind of energy, it's all going to come to you. You're playing with consciousness advancement. And so it's like it'll become a game, really. It becomes, you know, and treat it treat it like that. Have respect for it, but treat it like a game because it's very rewarding. And in a lot of times, it's fun. You walk away from a place you've gifted and you're like, holy crap, that was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, you describe this as a war. And like any other war, you have to win little battles along the way right? Until the war itself is then over. So Mitch, before we go, then tell people where they can find you if they do want to reach out to talk more about this with you. So uh, best thing is going to obviously be my website. So that would be the com. And then I have taken a little bit of a hiatus from Insta, Insta trash, uh, Instagram. I try to blog as much as possible. I document things as much as I can. But lately with, like I said, the uptick of what's going on, I've kind of taken a break from social media also to just 
decompress myself. But yeah, you can you can follow me on Instagram. Hopefully, I'll get through the checklist to approve. I approve everybody because some real disgusting people find their way into my follower list, and I won't. I only want humans following me. So send me a message if you don't have any way to identify you on your profile. Just send me a message and say, "Can I follow you?" or "I'd like to follow." Whatever. Keep it brief. I'll click yes, of course. But uh, you can find me there, Instagram. And then check out on my homepage, go through all of these interviews. You know, it's like, I feel like I've kind of done this like five part series over the last few months. And now here, like, cause I, I know how this will apply to all of the other ones and you can watch them all in sequ- sequential order. But, um, look at my videos on, you know, the chemtrail anomalies, uh, look at the breakdowns, look at the instructions, you know, there's, there's all kinds of things and some of it gets very esoteric, and, and into the occult stuff, but I think, you know, people appreciate the, I'm, I'm very, I'm as subtle as a gun basically, but my approach to doing this stuff is, uh, I think a little bit different. I try to make jokes and I try to uh, lighten such a dark topic because it is a dark topic. We're in a war, not a pillow fight. So just to keep that in mind and that it's not bad to acknowledge that once you can acknowledge the real problem, you can acknowledge the real solution. So for sure. Well, you know, you have an ally here in that war and what I call the kingdom of Ohio where I live. And uh, I look you live in a great hope- place to, to be doing. <laughs> yeah. After what we were talking about. So yeah. I'm, I'm excited about that. Yeah. So uh, and we can definitely talk more about that sometime, too. So I do appreciate your time. Thanks for being here. And we'd love to chat with you again soon. Absolutely. Thank you. And to everyone watching, thanks for sticking with me <laughs> and, and for your lovely comments, hopefully. But uh, yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And there you have it. My thanks again to Mitch, the Orgone donor. If you give any sort of fucks about the world you're living in and the real threats to it, check out and support his work and more on that in a moment. But I just wanted to say that personally, I think this dude is doing some of the most important work I've come across really in my entire life. And I'm proud to say I've not only joined him in that endeavor, but I've also made a new friend. And that is always a great feeling. In fact, a friend of mine just stopped through Sedona and I was able to connect her with Mitch for a rather impromptu in-person meetup and Mitch could not have been cooler and more accommodating about it. The guy really appreciates folks who take this mission seriously and who are willing to lend their minds and hearts and hands to it. And speaking of lending, I've recently launched a website busttheagenda.com where you can donate directly to these efforts to combat this geoengineered climate agenda Every donation goes directly into the hands of guys like Mitch and myself to acquire the materials needed to make these orgone devices because they're getting more expensive by the day. So you're supporting that, you're supporting the labor it takes to make these things because it is labor intensive too, and most importantly, you're contributing to better weather and the healing of Mother Nature. Lord knows she needs it. So if you're keen on contributing to a worthwhile cause this holiday season, check out busttheagenda.com, link in the show notes of course. Anyway, in the second hour with Mitch, we talked about more details of the chembusters and other orgone devices he builds and works with, including personal frequency cloaking devices. That's some cool shit right there. I also asked Mitch about his concerns over access to resin amidst the global climate hoax and gas price manipulation that's been happening recently. We also got into unnatural deserts and the geoengineered season of fall. Mitch has a really interesting and rather hot take on that. We also talked about how the sun's native EMF interrupts the increasing non-native EMF from the frequency fence, the frequency war possibly being waged on sylphs and other air elementals, and we chatted more about Mitch's orgone gifting efforts across the southwest. That stuff was just sort of peppered throughout the second hour. And Mitch actually made a great point in that second hour that I'd like to share here too. He said that the time to do this work is now because we need to take away the mainstream talking points. Because if that media narrative doesn't match the reality outside your window, then the narrative falls apart quicker than a chemtrail breaking up in the sky when it comes into contact with that energy output from those orgone devices. So you can support Mitch directly at theorgonedonor.com, or you can also support at busttheagenda.com. Either way, you're contributing to these efforts and to a better future for yourself, for your loved ones, for the children here now, and for the children incarnating soon, because that's really what it's all about. And it's also about that time for me to get out of here before I get got on YouTube again. I really am shadow banned on there, so if you're hearing this right now, share it wherever you can. I would appreciate it. But until next time, you already know what to do. Love yourself. Think for yourself and reclaim authority. (laughs) 